do you know that by the year 2050 the world population will be 9.2 billion out of which 70 percent that is 6.5 billion will be the urban population and the world economy will be double the size of today's there are some major trends we should be informed about like migration from rural to urban areas the higher energy requirement the structural shift in the energy sources will also may pose some challenges availability of fresh water will be a major challenge today only 80 percent of the population have access to clean water 40 percent of the population lack basic sanitation we have some major challenges to finance the cost of more people living longer and fewer children emerging economies need to enhance institutions and infrastructure to significantly realize significantly to realize the long-term growth potential given the longer lead time of infra projects we need to act now keeping this in mind Indian government through national infrastructure pipeline is ready to invest 1.4 trillion dollars in USD in next five years that is T that is 1.4 trillion dollars this investment will be in energy, roads, railways, ports, airports, uh, digital infra, etc. This will save industries. This will change the game. This will uh, create winners and losers. We need to know about this. We need to study this. So get it ready. Before we talk about the National Infrastructure Pipeline, that is NIP, let's talk about the current economic scenario of the country we know that india is in the middle of a slowdown um, but there are some structural reforms that are taking shape uh, initiatives like cleaning up of the financial sector balance sheets may start to show results corporate tax cuts will help the corporate sector lower their debt burden gst act insolvency and bankruptcy code as ibc have created the foundation for long-term increased growth potential of india more supply side reforms though are required to support the manufacturing competitiveness supply additions will boost the short-term gst and support long-term gst potential creating employment and supporting domestic uh, consumption in the long term improved logistics and networks will likely to improve the competitiveness of the economy now let's talk about how india would look like in the year 2030 in the year 2030 india is expected to have a population of 1.52 billion out of which 42 percent of the population will be living in the urban areas compared to 31 percent currently this is 638 million people or more than that little more than that in urban areas the working age population will be 1.03 billion and the median age is 31 years just 31 years and also there will be a structural shift a slight increase of the service sector's gdp contribution so we are looking at a population which is urban young and employed in services with this understanding, let's talk about NIP. Before we get into the details, let's talk about the high level, the strategic goals of NIP. The first goal is to enable environment for significant private investments. Next, to design, deliver and maintain public infrastructure projects to meet efficiency, equity and inclusiveness goals. Then to meet disaster resilience goals then to create fast track, fast track institutional regulatory and implementation framework for infrastructure then to benchmark infrastructure performance to global best practices and standards and to leverage technology to enhance services standard efficiency and safety with this understanding let's talk about some numbers we know that the total amount is 1.4 trillion dollars which comes to around a little more than 100 lakh crores in rupees. Now, the major impasse is, is on the energy sector, which will attract 24% of the total investment. 
then roads 19%, railways 13% and urban dwellings 16%. In energy, more than 50% will be invested in the conventional sources. Now the implementations of, of for these projects will be carried out 39% by center, 39% by the states and 22% by the private organizations. Uh, with this understanding, we un understand these are big numbers and this will need some financial market reforms. So let's talk about them. Given the long term nature of these projects, institutional investors are more suited for supporting these projects. But there is a problem. Most of these projects are rated below AA. Uh, which is not acceptable by most institutional investors. For this purpose, a credit enhancement fund is to be established uh, to support the credit rating of these bonds. Now, the municipal bond market may also be utilized so to support NIP. By the year 2024, 50 cities are expected to issue municipal bonds. To lower the funding burden, asset monetization is important. For this purpose, infrastructure investment trust will be used. Um, for this purpose, uh, there has been a regulatory change allowing 70% debt to asset ratio in investment trust from 49% earlier. Also, we need to think about how to monetize these assets created by NIP so how to charge the users to recover both the capital and operating cost for this purpose the task force uh, for nip has recommended independent regulatory and legislative regulatory mechanisms now for in the long term financial landscape we can see the cleaning of stressed assets and uh, liquidity support to nbfcs will be really helpful to prepare for NIP. Some other factors are loan securitization, uh, participation by infrastructure development funds, that is IDF, um, the development inst uh, finance institutions, deepening of IDF market, etc. Now you can see that this will, um, that NIP will actually guide the earnings of major industries and different companies. Um, and uh, in the long run, which will have an uh, impact on the winners and losers in industries. It is worth your time to research more about NIP and think how it will going to impact your industry and your company. Um, with this, this is Sam Ghosh and thank you for watching. Bye.